actually I had mixed I had a mixed reaction. Obviously I was happy. You know, but we made the case then and me worrying about my friend Iman. Cause I knew at that point that he wasn't gonna walk with me. It was I had mixed emotions, like so I obviously I was happy because that's a big burden off your chest, you know what I mean? But like I said, I had mixed emotions. Um, some critics have said in social media, why would um, these gentlemen, because you and Mr. Jeffers represented yourselves, right. why would they represent themselves in such a serious case? Why did you choose to do that? Well, in actual fact, I didn't. Um, I actually sought out counsel. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't even think I was going to get charged for it. So when I went to seek counsel, um, who in which I wanted to choose, he was already involved in the case with another defendant. So I, he advised me to seek other counsel. So when I did seek the other counsel, our relationship didn't get along. So I tried to there venture on. But because I am, I'm a teacher, I can't get legal aid. And with me not being able to get legal aid, they told me I would have to try to refinance property and because this case is gonna go so long and then it's gonna cost roughly up to eighty to hundred thousand dollars. No, I don't have none of that type of money. So there's no way I'm just gonna put myself in a hole doing full well. This is this or oh, I have nothing to do with it. So, you know, the truth will always set you free. That's how I always feel, but this is serious. I, I, I can't put nobody else in debt like that. And I'm not gonna put myself in debt. So I had to do it. Now understand when you testified in your own defense, you said that you were surprised that the charges were even laid against you. How did you feel even the day when you were arrested? Oof. When I was arrested, it was like, I mean, I'll just give you a brief on how the police actually entered, entered the property. They entered the property to an open sliding glass door and said, good evening, gentlemen. I didn't even have a clue why they was even there. In actual fact, I thought they was just looking for somebody until I saw about 10 to 15 other officers running in and proceeding to arrest everyone. So I was like highly shocked. Yeah, I was totally surprised. Now, this is Bermuda, so although you've been exonerated, um, people will still assume that you were guilty or had something to do with it. Right. How do you deal with that? It's difficult. I mean, even, even when I was not even convicted, or I wasn't even in, on trial yet, and I had run-ins with people you know, who feel they can just say what they like and, you know, try, I don't know if they're trying to egg me on or whatever, or try to find out information, but. <sighs> so you're a teacher, you're, you were, um, you've always been a gym teacher. Right. Do you feel that your credibility has been maligned by being attached to this case? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, my nephew, I teach my nephew, and my nephew has had to put up with all the children telling him that your uncle's a drug dealer. Now, you know, this is Bermuda, and parents are talking, children are in close proximity, and children, ch children will be children. They're gonna repeat what they heard their parents say or whatnot, and with a large, you know, amount or quantity of drugs that were heard, they assume that everyone is involved and it is, it's, it's terrible actually, um, yeah, I had to go through a lot. How do you think you can rebuild your credibility that in your opinion you don't even deserve losing? How can you rebuild it? For the people who truly know me, I don't have to. Because they truly know me, they truly know who I am. I have, I mean, I'm not saying I don't have support because I have so many parents from different schools, teachers coming to me and giving me mad support. So for those people who really know me, I don't have to, but it feels
feels like I have to um, prove myself to a certain extent, but I shouldn't have to because people are just going to think what they think regardless. And some people who are even in my face and probably smiling in my face are probably still thinking that I probably have something to do with it. So, Any idea of when you'll be back into the classroom? That's difficult. The reason why I say it's difficult uh, because the ministry are probably going to push me or try to push me back due to economic, you know, uh, economic uh, situations in Bermuda. But because obviously someone's covering me. But could you imagine me getting back into the classroom? I have been in classroom for two years. I don't know my P2s. I don't know my P1s. But coming up to an integral part, like our sports days and whatnot, like how are they going to expect me to organize all of that if I go back into the classroom next week? How are they going to expect me to do a report card on some children I don't even know? Some new children that have come in. Now we have new special needs children that I'm going to have to interact with. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be really difficult, especially at this time of the year. If I saw this happen, um, if I saw this finish before January, maybe because you have a whole year to get back. But if the short period just before May June, it's going to be extremely difficult. So. Um, but if they call, are you ready to go? I'm always ready to go. I will always be ready to, because I'm, I'm experienced in it. But now the stress level is right back to the top. I'm in stress like mad for a few years. Now I'm finally got something lifted off my back. And now I'll be getting right back into stress. So it's, it's difficult. So that's, that's what I can answer that.